So what do you like? What do you like most about this unit after kind of seeing what they've done this summer? I know you can't be around them all the time, but what do you like about where they are now compared to where they were in the spring? I think the football IQ is, has improved. I think that's the thing that sticks out the most. You know, obviously they've been working hard, you know, with Coach Fitz this summer, and obviously we hadn't had a whole lot of time with them. We have spent time with them the time that we can. Um, so the guys are, are eager to learn, and eager to go out there and put the best foot forward. I know you haven't been here a while, but you know Coach Pruitt was praising this coaching staff. How comfortable is this staff with each other? Very comfortable. Um, the main thing is everybody knows each other. We've all worked together in some capacity in the past. So it made the transition in the, of, of coaching together again that much easier because we all have the same philosophies. We all, all coach ball the same way and see it the same way. So, you know, it's been an easy transition coaching with people that you know in the past. Yeah, SEC is a line of scrimmage league, no doubt. How comfortable are you now or um, what are your thoughts so far on the progress of that defensive line? Well, yeah, you know, if, you, if you're not good in the trenches in the SEC, you don't have a hard day's work. Uh, we have a lot of bodies up front and a lot of competition at that group. Um, Coach Rocker does a really good job, you know, molding those guys, getting them to play the right way. So I look forward to seeing the outcome of the fall camp for those guys. When you finally had a time to sit down and, and watch some tape of these guys, was there a certain thing that you identified with the defense that you really wanted to work on and improve? Yeah, there's always things you want to work on, you know, coming out of spring ball, going into summer camp. You know, I think the communication of all 11 guys talking, saying the same language, saying it the same way, pre-snap identification of, of splits, you know, tight end formations, quarterback mannerisms, all those things can help us post-snap. Those are things we're going to harp on in camp. You mentioned football IQ improved from the spring. How, how do you... How has that been improved when you're not practicing football and you can't well, be around them that much? Well, it improves because the guys are a year older in the scheme, for one. And going through the spring and then having, having acclimated practices in the summer, you can also get around them and, and develop them a little bit more. So I think the familiarity with the, with the scheme, the coaching staff, I think that kind of helps guys calm down, take, a, take a, a deep breath and see things a little bit clearer. How much competition do you think you have at, at safety and, and at maybe the, the nickel and the, and the dime spot there in, in this you know, as you go into camp? I think we've got a lot of competition. Uh, we have a lot of guys that are playing some ball. Uh, we have some guys that are proving themselves. But we also got a, a bunch of guys that are coming up that are eager to, to put their foot on the field and make their imprint on the defense. So we have a lot of competition at the corner position, the star position, and safety position. So, you know, these guys are going to come into camp and attack the right way, and, and we're going to see who, who, who rises to the top. Are you a guy that likes to rotate a bunch of guys, or do, would you rather prefer to kind of find six or seven and kind of stick with those? Well, we want to try to find the best, you know, eight to nine, ten defensive backs that we can and try to rotate those guys throughout the season. And because we play so many different multiple packages, you want to have fresh legs and guys that can do different skill sets. So that's why we try to teach everybody, you know, more than one position to create depth within the defense. What are you wanting to see, Coach, out of the linebacking group heading into fall camp? Well, again, you know, those guys, we've got some juniors and seniors at that spot, and they play a lot of ball. You know, just quarterback in the defense, you know, talking to the front, being a signal caller, and just getting us in the right play and, getting, and being able to put out fires. Because sometimes we may see some things in the game that we may not prepare for, and we got to be able to put the fires out, and that's what those guys' jobs are. Coach yeah. Perrett said that uh, D'Angelo Gibbs will redshirt. What would you like to see him work on this year, um, you know, as he gets ready for um, playing down the road? Well, you know, D'Angelo is a guy that can play both sides of the ball. You know, he's got a unique skill set because he's a big man that can run, and he's got really good ball skills down the field. So receiver is a position that he can play as well. So we just want him to go out there every day and, and, and work as hard as he can, you know, to continue to develop his overall strength and strength conditioning levels and see what happens next year. Talk What's about how you're looking for uh, Daniel and Daryl to be leaders on that side of the ball. Yeah, th those two guys, like I said, they played, you know, three or four years starters in, in our scheme and, in, at Tennessee. So. We're expecting those guys to take a big jump and, and be the leaders of the defense. Specifically with Daryl, I mean, you had a couple games last year where he played at all America level, other games where he wasn't that much of a factor. What's caught your attention about him since you've gotten here? Well, Daryl works hard. You know, for one, he, he's done a really good job. You know, this all season of you know, putting on added weight and muscle. Uh, you can tell by his his frame, he's you know, put together really well. So, you know, going forward, it's all about him just going out there and pro providing you know depth for the young guys and leadership for the young guys and going out there and. and being a leader for the outside linebackers. You obviously signed junior college players to play. What are your early thoughts as you go into camp on, on Middleton and, and Savion Williams? Glad to have those guys. You know, you can never have enough big men up front. And with those two guys coming in, they add, you know, adequate depth to the defensive line, the interior of the line. And we're excited to see what those guys can do moving forward. You had Croucher in the spring. Obviously, Henry arrived this summer. What, what's kind of the early plan for both those two linebackers? 
Well, the early plan is to, to get him caught up as fast as we can. You know, Crouch went through spring, so, you know, he did some good things, showed some flashes, and, and to get Henry, you know, caught up to speed as quick as possible. Uh, because, again, we're trying to find the best football players we can find, and hopefully those two guys are in the mix. Do you envision them moving them around, or is it, is it more likely that you guys would like to find the spot for them just early in the first two weeks of camp and kind of keep them there? Well, both of them are inside linebacker types. You know, Crouch has a little bit more versatility, but Henry's more of an inside signal caller type guy. So we're going we're gonna to put them at a spot and try to let them grow. And if they can handle more multiples, then we'll give them more multiples. Coach, are you a guy that likes to watch a lot of film from last season, or are you one that wants to make your own judgments and, and look at the guys on the practice field and what they got? No, I think you definitely got to watch last season because you have common opponents. You have opponents that you're going to see again. But also you want to see the skill set of the guys that you have. Um, I wasn't away from college football that long, so I already knew kind of what we had here, you know, just talking to Coach Pruitt and recruiting some of these guys. So I had an idea what kind of skill set we had. And watching from the same defense, you know, is that, or some of the same principles, does that make it easier? Because I guess maybe with, with Coach Cheney on the other side of the ball, he's looking at guys from last season playing a different kind of offense a little bit, but, but your guys are, are going to be doing the same stuff. Does that make it a little easier to watch that film? It does, because you can see some of the same concepts that show up over and over and over, some of your bread and butter stuff and what you need to kind of tweak and what you can help them, you know, become better at. But again, Last year was year one, and this is year two, so guys should calm down with that. How do you define football IQ, and what does it take to discern that confidently and where a guy stands in that regard? Well, I think football IQ is, is, is the volume of football that kids can, can handle, comprehend, and be able to regurgitate back to their teammates. Pre-snap keys, you know, quarterback mannerisms, down and distance, um, situational football, all those things goes into being a very smart football player. Our, our, our whole team has to become smarter, especially on defense. You talked about watching some film from last season. Alante Taylor was a guy who, who played a lot later in the season, like some freshmen do. He, he kind of fell off a little bit. Did you see a different guy out there this spring? And, and what have been your thoughts as you kind of got into coach him? Well, Alante's been working hard since I've been here. You know, he played a lot as a freshman last year. Corner's a tough spot to, to be thrown into the fray as a freshman in the SEC. And, you know, he did some good things, and he's got a lot of room for improvement. And he took that took that advantage this, this spring and tried to start that um, good habits, and he took it into the, the summer. So hopefully he'll have a good camp. What have you seen from Thompson as well at the corner? Um, same thing, Bryce, you know, again, freshman that played a lot last year, um, really good ball skills. So we're expecting him to, you know, take another jump, you know, leadership role, doing things the right way, being accountable. So we're looking forward to him having a really good camp as well. How does it feel to go back, you know, working with uh, Chris Rump again? feels really good, really good. Chris is one of my mentors. Um, I've known him for a long time, and we work well together. Yeah, good. Make sure you send him that check. I think he probably needs it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you talk about guys like, you know, Alante and, and Bryce and kind of having to go through the fire a little bit last year as freshmen. But having those those guys that have that much talent in corner and they're still young, but they've got some experience, does that kind of give you a nice building block at that position with those guys? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, because the style of defense we want to play, you have to be really good on the outside, on the perimeter. Uh, if you can't have, if you don't have really good corners, it places a limitation on your defense. So, you know, with those two guys got a lot of room to improve. They got a lot of work to do, uh, but they're trending in the right direction. How do you coach a guy to kind of be as, you know, because y'all want, you know, aggressive out there, playing a lot of man, a lot of press stuff. Mm -hmm. Where's that line between being aggressive and, and being too aggressive? How do you kind of, how do you, how do you kind of teach guys that fine line? Well, I think as a coordinator, I think you got to play to your strengths, and you have to identify early what your strengths are going to be and be able to call the game and be able to adjust to that strength. If you don't have really good corners, then you have to play a different style of football. Um, so, But again, you don't want to leave those guys out there exclusively on their own. They, they need help like everybody else, and we're going to try to provide them with that. I know it's really early on, but have you been able to identify any of those strengths of this defense so far? Well, the, the strengths are I think we have some experience back. I think we have some guys that played a lot, um, whether it be last year or the year before. So guys have seen SEC football live and in color. And, and for me, that's a big thing because this league is so, so dominant, so physical, that you want guys that have play tape and game time. Um, so a strength of ours is going to be guys that have played. You know, we got to build our identity this camp. Is Coach Roman Harrison someone that could give you guys, you know, Jeremy talked about those designated pass rushers. Is he a guy that you guys are kind of looking at in that role as he kind of continues to learn the defense, but just with help that you all need opposite of Daryl Taylor? Yeah, we hope so. We hope so because if you can't affect the quarterback, you can't win. You know, so we're going to, you know, push Roman to see how much he can he can handle and hopefully he can be that edge guy, you know, opposite of Daryl on some situational packages that can help us rush the quarterback. Absolutely. Has this summer in the last few weeks been any different for you leading into this camp? as a first-time coordinator versus being a position coach? And what have been those differences for you? 
Yeah, the, the biggest difference is, is preparing for the whole defense, you know, understanding that my role has increased with, with the responsibility and making sure everybody's aligned the same way. Uh, from the coaching staff, from the, from the players, from the support staff, to make sure we're all going in the same direction. So that's been the biggest, biggest learning curve going forward this summer. Rick, with a guy like Nigel Warrior, how do you, as a coach, how do you take all that kind of physical talent that, that he has and turn it into being maybe more disruptive in the game with, you know, getting picks and you know, forcing turnovers? And it just seems like with all the parts there that he's got the ability to do that. How do you get that out of him? Well, I think practicing the right way, you know, practicing the right habits, you know, doing it the right way over and over and over and creating those kind of habits will, will show on the, on the field on Saturdays. Because Nigel is a guy that has a lot of ability, and it's my job to make sure he's playing at a high level. When you're calling a defense for a head coach who's had experience calling a defense, how does that relationship uh, work, and has it been going so far with well, you know, I've never called a defense with a head coach before, but just in the past, been on different staffs of that nature. You know, the head coach has always had input, and he always is an extra set of eyes, so to speak. And I'm sure Coach Pruitt will be the same way. You know, he has a lot of ideas, uh, very bright. He's done this for a long time, so I'm sure I'll lean on him every day, you know, throughout this process. As a first time coordinator, having a staff with this much experience, I got to imagine that's about as good as a situation could be when you, when you look at kind of the experience that, that's in that room when y'all are having meetings and stuff. Absolutely. You know, that was one of the, the draws for me to come take this job because it was very, you know, glamorous because our guys did have a lot of experience and they, they know how to do it in this league. They've done it before, proven veterans, and they're good men. So that was very attractive for me when I decided to take the job. I think two more questions, guys. Have you seen Trayvon Flowers develop? And, and what's, you know, as a guy who didn't play a lot of football in high school, what, what's kind of the, is, is, have you seen a, a big jump in him? And what's the challenge for him to get ready to maybe take on a bigger role this year? Yeah, Trayvon's been working hard. You know, he had a productive spring. You know, he's had a pretty good summer. Um, so this fall camp's going to be big for his development uh, because he wasn't a mid-year guy last year. So this will be his second true fall camp. Uh, we all know he missed some time in the fall. So this will be a big camp to get him fine-tuned to, to be a big-time player for us. Last question. I guess with Trayvon, again, he's a guy who for, for several years there didn't play football. You know, he, he played baseball. Can, can having a blank slate like that be a good thing in some ways? I mean, you know, some guys develop bad habits over high school and they get by on talent. But right. having a blank slate with him, has that helped at all? trying to teach him stuff? Well, the sport that he really hung his hat on was baseball, which is a lot like playing defensive back. Very reactionary position. You have to track the ball, good hand-eye coordination. Um, so the skill set was very similar. Um, the contact part is not there, obviously. But he's shown every, us every sign that he's not afraid of contact. So we're, we're excited about him moving forward. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.